Welcome, my young Buntag, and welcome to a, another episode of my Filipino venture. And today we're going to talk about how to increase your enjoyment of your Philippine trip. So, if this is if you've never been to the Philippines and you're watching these videos because you think I got to go to the Philippines, I'm going to say do it. Just do it. There's never going to be a perfect time. Just book your ticket. That's the hardest part is booking your ticket. Uh, I remember the first time I went, I hovered over that buy it now on my ticket many times before I actually pushed the button. And now I've been over here six times. And um, now I'm just a traveler. There's a lot of videos out there of people who live here and their advice is paramount. They live here every day. I'm just here as a vacationer, but I've spent enough time in here to know as a traveler, I think what can help you in, uh, enjoy your trip even more. Now, first off, if you know you're going, hopefully sometime in advance, like two or three months would be ideal. I would say, I remember my first trip, I started going to the gym and I lost weight and I was in really good shape for the first two or three trips. Now this trip I didn't, you can see I put on some weight, being married to a Filipina will do that to you. They like to feed you. And I didn't hit the gym and exercise. And I feel it this trip. I don't feel as uh, in shape. And I feel that my uh, mobility is a little bit more li limited compared to my first few trips. So I say if you have the means, or if you're already in great shape, that's fantastic. But if you're, if, if you're not, just uh, spend a couple months hitting the treadmill, going for walks, build up your stamina and um, your cardio, and that will enhance your trip a lot, trust me. I remember our first trip, oh man, we climbed the top of Mount Apu, which tall was, volcano. yeah, then we, you know, tall, the, the tall volcano. And um, in this trip, uh, I think it would, it would be a struggle for me since I didn't exercise. Um, so, do what I say, don't do what I do. Like this trip, like I said, I, I should have exercised more and dropped a few pounds before I, I went on this trip. That's number one. Number two, if you're coming over and you don't have a Filipina, it might be a little overwhelming. So I can't speak too much to this because I've always had a Filipina to travel with and she is my tour guide. So uh, that's the best option I would say, especially for the beginner. Now at this point, six times over here, even if you wanted to stay at home and I wanted to come visit the Philippines, I'd feel pretty comfortable moving about, getting things done, um, and, and not being afraid of anything because I've been up here a lot. Um, now let's move on to, okay, let's talk about the language. Now everyone here pretty much speaks English, mostly the women and I like the people at the hotels and the service industry, they speak pretty good English. But a lot of the locals, um, trike drivers, things like that, their English is limited. So you should learn a few phrases in either Tagalog or Visayan. In my case, I know a mixture of both. Some Tagalog, mostly Visayan, because my wife's Visayan. So, um, but, and the other thing too, is if you speak a little bit of Visayan, Oh man, the locals love it, don't they, man? Yeah. If you speak a little bit of sign as a foreigner, the locals just love it. Oh yeah. Oh, they smile. They, I'll be at a booth, like a, and I'll say something in the sign, and two or three booths down, people like some old ladies, oh, the sign, he's speaking the sign. They get big smiles on their face, and they just love it. Um, so it wouldn't kill you to learn a few things, and we'll go over the basics. Um, we're going to do the sign for the morning. Um, if you're going to Manila, learn Tagalog. Um, I'm sorry, burp, I had to burp. Um, I know it in the sign. It's my I O M A A Y O N G. N G. But they pronounce every vowel. So it's Maayang. And then just remember Maayang or Mayang. A lot of people just say Mayang. Mayang. I. The proper pronunciation is Mayang, but Mayang is fine. Um, Buntag is morning. Alpan, afternoon. And Gabi'i 
is evening. So if you walk into, you check into your hotel and it's at nighttime, you say, I'm the bee. And they, they just really enjoy that. Um, thank you is a must. You should learn that. And that's easy. That's salama. Just think of salami with the T at the end. Salama. And you should always use that. I use salama all the time. And if you want to say you're welcome, I use a Tagalog here called um, Walang Anuman. Walang Anuman is you're welcome. Uh, what's another good one? Siggy Siggy is, is simple. Everyone can remember Siggy Siggy or Siggy. It just which means okay. So you can say, oh, Siggy Siggy, okay, okay. And what else is a good one? Oh, this trip I've learned, I always knew what water was, but it's too big. Just think of the number two and big. Uh, water is too big. And if you want to take it one step closer, this trip I learned Bugnau, which is cold. So sometimes you go to a store, they have water sitting on the counter, but if you want it cold, ask them for too big Bugnau, or Bugnau too big, and that means cold. And um, this way, if they have it, they'll go in the back of the refrigerator and get some cold too big. And then they give it to you, and you can say how much, and I already forgot how much is... Uh, Magtano. Mag huh? Magtano. Magtano. M-A-G-K-A-A. That's Tagalog. That's Tagalog. And, but if you speak Tagalog, they'll understand you everywhere. So if you're going to pick a language to speak, learn Tagalog, because they speak Tagalog in Visayas. But they don't necessarily speak the sign in Manila. Oh, I'm sorry, in Manila, which they only speak Tagalog. But if you anywhere in the in the Philippines you learn Tagalog, you'll get by. Bud Brown knows Tagalog fluently, and he can speak in Manila, and he can speak in Dumaguete, and everyone understands him. Plus, he knows quite a bit of the sign too. He's really good with uh, language. Macano. How much? Mm -hmm. um, so I think those are the basics. If you just learn, and you have to learn all of those, just learn a couple of them. Uh, people will smile and like you more. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, they just make an, it's like you're making an effort and they they enjoy it. And then of course they say, oh, you speak the sign, and then they start speaking the sign. I said, no, 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 no. I said, there's just a couple of words. And, uh, but they get a big kick on it. So that will definitely enhance your vacation. Um, I've got some more, but I have to think about it. Okay. Number three, Mabuhay. Just, I've said this before, and you've heard this on a lot of other channels. Just chill and go with the flow. This is not America. This is their country, and things work at a, their pace. A lot of times they're out of stock on things. A lot of time you have to wait for hours, especially if you have paperwork to do. It can take you all day to do that. Now you can get angry and stomp your feet and you're just gonna embarrass yourself and look like a dumb American or a dumb Westerner or a dumb whatever. So don't bring your expectations of, of service and convenience to the Philippines. This is a, a emerging country, it's a third world country, but they're growing, they're doing their best. And um, you'll enjoy yourself more if you just park your ego. And I have a hard time doing with this because I can be a grumpy bastard. So I have to remind myself quite quite often that uh, this is not my country. Just relax, go with the flow, and don't get worked up because it's not going to do anything but make you worked up. It's not going to help the situation at all. It's like now we're waiting four hours for our boat. No, sit back and enjoy it because that's all you can do. There's nothing you can do to change it. So just chill mabuha and what does mabuha mean like, oh, come. something sounds like that yeah it's kind of more of an attitude thing isn't it yeah. mabuha okay i think i'll finish up with this one lastly how to treat the the locals the filipinos um they have this very high sense of worth what's it called moral what's the word they use I don't know, Ned, I heard Ned use it once to explain more copia or something like that. More, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't hear that one. Yeah. Is you never call out a Filipino in public. 
never berate or yell at a Filipino in public. It is taboo, and it's, they, like I said, they have uh, a sense of self-worth that you don't cross the line, in, especially in public. So, like today, we were at our hotel, and they had a free buffet breakfast for, for um, guests. So we went, we got a coffee, we sat it down at this table, and they were, they were like long tables, so there was no like, everyone gets a little table. And we went to the buffet to get our food, to come back, and there were people sitting in our table. Right in our table where our coffee was. They saw the coffee here, but they, yet they sat there. And like in America, I would have said, yo, step off, this is our spot. But here we just moved our coffee over, there was plenty of room. We just moved it to a different table. Well, I, sorry, honey, I yeah. got the Go ahead. Sorry, uh, some, some Filipino, they will say, excuse me, this is my table, but I'm not like, I'll get yeah. high. So I just like walk away and get my food. Yeah, so that's a good example of, that's a borderline situation. You could have probably said something in that situation, but we decided just to move because there was plenty of other spots. Um, yeah, if someone does you wrong or you think that they've done you wrong, um, don't get angry and, and call them names in public. Um, it's, a, it's an unspoken rule and it's even a law, isn't there? Okay, a slander law. Like if you are on the internet, Facebook and you call someone a dirty, rotten thief or yeah, something, yeah. they can actually bring criminal charges <laughs> against you. That's true. Cyber yeah. bullying? So, well, <coughs> yeah, one guy got kicked out of Manila for that. I know a, a guy, he lived in Manila, and he was making fun of a person on social media, and uh, they kicked him out of the country for doing that. So, um, yeah, so just uh, treat, ev treat everyone with a lot extra respect, and especially if you're driving, you know, we like to road rage in America, don't do that here. Can we cut you off? Whatever, just chill, let them go. Don't uh, get honk your horn and, and get on their ass and, and try to start a fight with them. That's, that's a no. Yeah, that's a no no. Be patient. They call it the long patience, right? The long patience. You have to have long patience in the Philippines. And once you accept that and you learn to do with it, it gets it's pretty easy. That's true. And it's better for you because you don't get all worked up. Yeah. In America, I get worked up and sometimes it'll ruin half my day thinking about how this guy cut me off and how angry I get. Here, five minutes, two minutes, you're done with it and you move on. So I think it's better for you as a person. Now, I will end this with saying that this is also a double-edged sword for the Filipinos themselves. By being so courteous and not wishing to hurt anyone's feelings, they suffer in that they get poor service because nobody will speak out. So if you get cold food, I know Ina, for example, she'll just eat it. She won't send it back or cause a scene. But by doing that, you're, you're continuing the habit of bad service. So it's a double-edged sword. Do you do it and be the loud American? Or, you know what I guess saying? this is our way. This is our oh, way. Right. We don't know. Right. Like, like complain a lot. But I think if there was a little level of complaining, not to be rude, I think that service would improve because they don't want to hear people complaining. They don't, no one complains, so they just keep on doing the things they do. Um, so like I said, they, they kind of get what they deserve. By being so nice, they get stepped on, I think. And it lowers the service level down a little bit. Um, but it's their country, and if that's the way they want to operate, I can live with that. And so can you, because you have no choice. So, okay, that's going to wrap up this video. Hopefully, if you have any uh, more comments or things that I missed, or if you disagree with some of the things I said, just go ahead and put those in the comments. But uh, until then, stay safe, stay, stay. cool, and stay... Classic.